So I can't believe I forgot to tell you this part. So we're getting off the plane when we landed in Chicago. One guy goes to get his luggage and rips it out and smashes another guy in the head. The guy goes kind of like flying back. And, and the guy who hit him, you know, it was definitely an accident. They were both like businessmen, like older businessmen who clearly had no concern for the other one, especially the guy who just got smashed in the head. And he turns around and he looks at him and he's like, the guy's like, oh, my God, it's got hit. The guy's like, sorry, is this what the world's come to? I couldn't believe what I saw. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com and welcome to our first part in our new series. It's going to be nine videos. It's going to be uh, all about... Uh, using the Microsoft Graph, the API for Windows device management. You can use it for other device management as well, but that's going to be our focus on here. So in this first part called What is Microsoft Graph API, we're going to be talking about just what that is, right? So starting from the beginning, you don't have to know anything to get on board with this. I'm going to take you through the whole thing, starting with, well, what is the graph, the thing I said. And if that wasn't bad enough, that I actually witnessed that violence on the airplane, Get off the plane, no Dunkin' Donuts in the airport. It's like when it goes downhill, it just really goes downhill. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so if you've been working with Intune or Microsoft 365 in general, you've probably heard, you know, the term graph or Microsoft graph or graph API. And you're thinking to yourself, I, that's way beyond me. I do endpoint management and now I have to be a developer. I've even heard some folks say that like, thanks, Microsoft. I guess I'm a developer now, right? That's kind of what, you know, if you're new to APIs and all that, it could seem overwhelming. But what actually has happened here is Microsoft gave us the platform, right? Let's talk about Intune and then a complete back end, right? Of commands and privileges and, and, just more things we can do to get more information and more action out of what we do day to day with Intune. And once you can master that, it starts making sense. You're like, oh, okay, I can do this, this, and that, which I've been struggling to do um, in Intune. So let me give you an example. So let's just do something very simple here in Intune. So we're gonna go Windows devices and we're gonna try to sort these by compliant devices. And we can sort to get the compliant ones first. I can also add a filter and I can say compliance. Uh, let's look for all non-compliant devices. And there we go, right? So now let's go ahead and talk about what's happening with the Microsoft Graph. So to do that with the Microsoft Graph, I can literally come in here and find the appropriate endpoint for Intune, it's device management manage devices and then I can add a filter on that just like we did in the console equals we can look for device compliance so compliance state compliance state equals equals non-compliant and now you can see I'm getting only, it should be the same devices back. So I got five here. And if I go back to Intune, there were five here as well. And basically what I'm looking at here equals what I would look at in Intune. So that's kind of a practical example of how we can uh, use the graph. All right, so let me give you an example of, you know, I could talk about the benefits of the graph and the pros and cons of it, but let me give an example of why it's useful. All right, so let's say for a moment you have data in Intune and Enter ID. These are two platforms in two platforms we work in quite a bit. So let's say you wanted to get some information about devices, right? So let's say I want to find uh, find non-compliant devices. Well, that's simple. We can do that in Intune, right? And then what we want to do is we want to find them find filter by a certain OS. Easy. But now let's take it a step further. Let's say we wanted to grab something, some data that really wasn't included in Intune. So we wanted to say, get the current user and we want to get their license. Get user license. Okay. Well, first of all, the current user is not something we're going to get from Intune. That's something we're going to get from Entra ID because all we're going to get from 
Intune is the primary user. So we would have to correlate that to find out who is logged in currently. And at that point, getting the user license, well, that's an intro thing, right? So what I could do is I can log into Intune, get the information I need, and then log into Entra and try to track it down myself. Okay, but with the Microsoft Graph API, I don't have to go into these separately. The Microsoft Graph contains data and accessible endpoints, both of these, Intune, Entra, and way more. So we can do this all with the Microsoft Graph because it has endpoints we can talk to to get all this information. So you could see with one command now, instead of going to two different consoles, we can literally just log in to the graph here and kind of run because it has device management and users, which is both Intune and Intra ID. We can say, hey, find the non-compliant devices, filter them by the OS version, get the primary user, now check enter it for the current logged in user in case it's different, and then get their user license, right? So the whole idea of this is we have one-stop shop for all the data inside of Microsoft 365. We can automate this because I'm going to show you how to do that with PowerShell. And uh, I mean, you could really do whatever you want. I just happen to know PowerShell. Um, and you can also set these things up to be recurring and automated. So before we jump in, uh, there's a few prerequisites you have to understand. Uh, the biggest one is permissions, right? You have to have permissions to use the graph, and that's going to correlate with whatever your Microsoft privileges are. So if you are an Intune administrator and you log in to authenticate to the Microsoft graph, you're going to be able to see the same data you would if you logged into the Intune console. So nothing changes there. There's a first time accepting of privileges that has to be done when using the Microsoft graph. This is typically done by a global administrator. Uh, first time you make a request, you have to consent on behalf of the organization. So, you know, when using the Graph Explorer, if you're not a global admin, expect to hit that and I'll show you what you can see there. Another thing we've covered on the channel before, but we're going to go through very uh, specifically is app registrations, right? If you want to run commands from a PowerShell script or from a client device, and you're not going to be the one logging in, you can actually preset a client ID and a secret, like a password, or you can use a certificate. You can use uh, you can use components to automatically authenticate to the graph for you, so you don't have to do it every time. All right, so let's get started by using the Graph Explorer. We're gonna open our browser, okay? And we're gonna go to graph.developer.microsoft, uh, Microsoft, Actually, I think it's just, sorry, it's developer.microsoft.com, your language, mine is English US, Graph, Graph Explorer. And you're gonna click here and you're gonna sign in. And the first time you sign in, you're gonna be asked to consent to permissions. Um, now each permission does have to be consented individually. So you're probably only gonna do this as you go through different calls. But let me actually open up a new one just to give you an example of what that looks like. So when I hit sign in, I'm going to use my other account, my Rubix Labs, rubixlabs.io, oh, rubixlab.io. And this might be the first time I'm signing into this, so this is gonna be important. Now, when we click on modify permissions, you get some basic permissions, right? You get your own user read, so you can read basic user information. Um, but you'll notice a lot of these say consent here. So let's let's do something really simple just to kind of kick things off. I am gonna go, uh, and you have two versions here, version 1.0 and beta. We're gonna be working with beta every time we're in here just because it allows more features. It's actually what Intune typically uses. So I'm gonna just type users. So this interface, it, this interface makes it very easy to interact with the graph. So you can see I can select from the different methods here, post, put, patch, delete. I choose my version. Like I said, we're gonna use beta. And then this is the endpoint you're making a request to. So when I hit run query, it's just looking at users. This would be the same if I went to look through Entra ID, right? So I'm seeing all the users in my tenant. So if you're not seeing something, you click on modify permissions and you can see I've already consented to everything here. But if for some reason, uh, there's something I can't see and it tells me I can just click consent. And if I have the permissions, I can consent on behalf of the organization. 
All right, let's try a different endpoint now. So that was users. So clicking on devices is not necessarily Intune. That's gonna give me Entra devices, all devices. So think about it like if you don't have anything after beta, you're just in Entra essentially. But now for Intune, Intune has its own node and that is device management. So by starting there, you can see I don't really get much back. It's just telling me, hey, this is this is OK. And you'll know if something's not right, because if you query something that's spelled wrong or it's it's malformed, it'll tell you you'll get a bad request error. That's because I left the T off. So device management is in tune and there are several things we can do after that inside. So if I just do the forward slash you're going to see all these things I can query inside of Intune, just like the real Intune. There's different places you can go, right? Um, now, what's really helpful is they have docs, and I highly recommend going through the docs and searching things, especially this one, beta endpoint reference. OK, so if you're curious about something, so if I want to search managed devices, list Windows managed devices, let's take a look. It's going to tell us exactly how to do that. It says right here, it tells us the permissions we need, and it tells us what the actual request needs to be. So get device management, manage devices. So that should be all the devices we have in Intune. And just to check, let's go back, let's remove our filters. Let's see what we have. We have 19 devices in our tenant. So that's what I should see. So we're gonna say get device management managed devices and we're just going to hit run query and you can see the number here is 19 so we got back 19 records and each one of these represents and see i can close these and open them if i wanted to but each one represents a device in intune with all the information there and we can also focus in on things that are just select equals display let's do i think it's device name device name. So if I run the query now, it's just going to give me the names of the devices. So I don't have to have all that information. I can add the select query and drill that down. I believe I can also add other things. So if I wanted to say autopilot enrolled, now I'm just getting back those two values, right? Is it autopilot enrolled and what's its name type of thing. And you can keep adding on to that if you want to collect certain names. So if I wanted to get the Entra device ID or the Azure AD device ID. I've now added that to my payload to come back. So very interesting here, the kind of data you can pull. If I look for this device name, that is autopilot enrolled. This is ZTAI 2869. Let's copy that. And let's search here for it. How do I know this is autopilot enrolled just by looking at it here? So yes, I can see the autopilot reset action from here. But other than that, I can go to enrollment. I do have a profile name. But if I want to report on all the devices here that are managed by Intune and autopilot enrolled, uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. So already that's information that I can easily get from the graph that I can't get from Intune. This is how admins use this type of thing on reporting on data that's not readily available. So one of the first things I would encourage everyone who hasn't experienced the Microsoft Graph yet is if you have a lab tenant, something where you have permissions to uh, head to the Graph Explorer website, I'll put that below and just go through some of the calls we made today, you know, beta slash users, beta slash devices, device management, and start trying to look through the JSON and getting familiar with how things kind of match up to what you would see in the Intune console, right? There's so many endpoints, but we're mainly going to be focusing on device management throughout this series, A, because that's usually what we talk about, but also just it's easier to get comfortable with one endpoint. And we'll, we'll branch out a little as we make correlations, but I would say start going through there uh, to begin with. So in the next episode, we're going to talk a little bit about how this actually works. Like we looked at the concept, we looked at the benefits of it, but I want to dive just a little deep into some of the practical things like, you know, what those API, API calls look like, how we can make them with, you know, Postman. So you can see the world outside the Graph Explorer, and then we'll start putting them into actual uh 
practical things we can do with Intune. If you belong to the members channel, there is a follow up to this video. It's called Advanced Graph Queries. So we're going to kind of go a little bit deeper into what we show today, but we're going to talk a little bit more about some of those filters and select objects and how you can really manipulate the payloads that come back. Uh, let me know in the discord, uh, if you're using graph, some cool, uh, maybe some cool concepts that you do with it today. I'm always love to see how folks use it and, uh, we'll be seeing you.